back in 1997 when I was the number one rep in the whole company. And I can't wait and I'd love to share tips on how to increase your Cutco business. So with that being said, I want to say thanks again for your short time here on this video. Have a great evening. Have a great day. All right. So it's Mr. Gamboa. Perfect. So uh, what I want to do is I want to talk uh, about um, the next uh, the next part of, of, of your training is page eight in your training manual. And to set up page eight, I want to talk a little bit about consumer psychology. What I'm essentially going to do right now is I'm going to influence you guys on something that if you take a marketing or a business class, they could spend an entire semester of college on. I'm going to teach it to you in about 10 minutes. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of bring this to you to really help you have some light bulbs. Uh, I'll, I'll pre-frame this by saying this. If you understand what I'm about to teach you right now and really, truly understand it, you'll be on that wall in, in 10 days from now. One, without a shadow of a doubt, if you truly understand what I'm about to say and what I'm about to cover with you in the next 10 minutes. Hands down. Number one thing that will get you on that wall is if you understand what I'm about to talk about. Cool? So... Um, it's more, you, you, you might need to take a physical note or two, but it's really about processing and understanding this and, and, um, uh, aligning with these principles. So let's talk, we talked about this briefly already about thinking like an HM3, like a homeowner versus a college kid, thinking like a family versus a college kid. So, uh, let's go under this umbrella. All right. So a family, let's take out our calculators, go ahead and pull out your cell phones. If you have it nearby, you can share with a partner if you need. Okay, and pull up your calculator, resist the temptation, and you know, check your snaps and texts and all that stuff, I get it. All right, so you pull your calculator. We're gonna walk through the eyes of a homeowner and a family. So to furnish a bedroom, their master bedroom in the house, how much, uh, you know, how much, uh, you guys probably don't know since you don't even know, uh, you don't have a credit card, so let me at least educate you on a bed. So a mattress, the mattress on a bed is about a grand, okay? If you get a nice Tempur-Pedic, you know, billow top, all that, you're spending two or three just for the mattress. Then you get a box spring, you get a headboard, a sleigh, then you have nightstands to match, and then you have a dresser. Maybe there's a TV in the bedroom. That whole setup, maybe five Gs or more, right? Then you have a closet filled with clothes and shoes and suits, right? Purses, maybe. Then you have jewelry. Then there's a whole makeup station in your parents' bedroom, right? Maybe there's curtains, pillows, comforters, sheets, all that stuff, right? To furnish that bedroom, how much are we talking? 10 grand, Ten, ten grand more, right? Minimum. You follow? We're gonna call it five grand, just five grand, easy, simple, low number, 5,000 bucks to furnish that whole bedroom, okay? How many bedrooms is in an average family house? Say it's a family of four, how many, or maybe it's a family of you know, three, whatever, maybe three bedrooms, right? So let's say the other two bedrooms aren't as decked out, let's say the other two are five grand total combined. That's 10 grand on bedrooms, put $10,000 in your calculator. So you got $10,000 on bedrooms. Now we get the living area, the TV room. What's in the TV room? Uh, there's a TV, right? Couch. Probably a TV. Couches. Now, give you an idea for TV. TVs range in, in variety nowadays. I mean, it could be on the low end, a couple hundred. It could be on the high end, a couple thousand. Couches. Sectional, like a leather sectional couch is about six to eight grand. If it's leather cloth, it's probably about five to six. Uh, and then you have maybe a Lazy Boy recliner. If it's just a love seat and a sofa, uh, then you're talking about five, six grand leather, maybe two, three cloth. Um, so along those lines, anybody ever get yelled at for putting like a cup on the coffee table before? Like it's that nice little ring around it. And well, that coffee was like 800 bucks. That's why they freaked out over it. Why didn't you care about the coffee table? Cause you didn't spend $800 for the coffee table, right? So you really didn't think that was a big deal, but now you know that's an $800 table. That's why they don't want to mess it up with a little ring around the wood, right? Uh, so you got a four piece of wood with four, four legs, 800 bucks. You got the end tables near the couches. You got a throw rug on the, on the floor. Maybe there's some lighting, maybe there's surround sound. To furnish that room, let's call it five grand. We're gonna go very low on these numbers, very low, and you'll see why in a moment. So add another five grand. Then you got the, uh, uh, the kitchen table. Anybody ever get yelled at for leaning back on a chair growing up so you don't you know, hurt yourself? No, you don't break a chair. How much is a chair? Just one chair. Well, it depends on the quality, right? A nice dining room chair, probably 200 or more. These chairs you're sitting in, 40 bucks. You're welcome. I was going to give you the $10 Walmart metal folding chairs. You're welcome. Okay? 40 bucks a chair. And you can count up how many chairs I have here. A nice kitchen table chair, about 100 bucks. Can you buy just one? No, like I'm in a set of like six, right? And you have around the kitchen table plus the table itself, easily 1,000 bucks for the chair and the table. Put 1,000 bucks in there for a kitchen table and some chairs. 
Now we're up to a G. Charges. Your phone's charging. Oh, no, my phone broke. Broke? Okay. Right now? No. Oh, oh, oh. Got it. So uh, I was like, man, that's unfortunate. Um, so we got, so, so we're at the kitchen table. Now, we're not going to add this into this calculation, but anybody ever been in a house uh, with a no-touch room? Like when you're like a little kid? You know what I'm talking about? Like the carpet's like vacuumed a certain way. They have a china cabinet in there. Maybe it's like the, like the, the play settings that no one, no one was allowed to go in there just for the holidays. Little kids can't go in there. No pets. You know what I'm talking about? Nice chandelier, nice lighting, all that. That room probably costs like 80 grand. And they don't even use it. We're not going to include that room in this house. Like the table has like nice wood carvings. The table's like 10 G's, right? But we're not going to include that in this house, okay? Uh, kitchen. Because in the kitchen, let's do a kitchen. We got a fridge, 1000 bucks. We got a, uh, a, wa- a dishwasher, 1000 bucks. We got an oven and a range microwave, 1000 bucks. Um, easy. That doesn't matter. There's probably probably more, but that's usually what it is. Uh, then we got a, a dish, a washer and dryer, thousand bucks for a washer and dryer. Okay. And if they didn't upgrade in their kitchen for like granite, wood cabinet, something like that, you're talking. My wife and I just did this. It was it was forty G's is how much we're in right now with our upgrade for our house. Okay. Uh, it was a very painful, very painful experience for me. I don't like spending money. Like when we went to Granite, we went to the Depot Granite. And I was like, all right, I, I plan on spending like three grand. Like I had no idea. I never really like sh- like shopped around. I didn't know there's different levels of granite. So of course, when I got there, you know, what are they showing us? The top level granite first, and uh, they started us at like thirteen grand for just the granite. And I was like, you're out your mind. I had my, I had, in my mind, three grand. I was like, no, 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 no. We might buy that. We might not be getting granite, right? And then they walked us down from the thirteen to the nine thousand to the six thousand, and we landed on the thirty six hundred dollar granite. It's like the low end, like the broke people granite, you know. And uh, plus the installation was another extra fee, and then the appliances, everything like that. It was expensive, but you know that's what grown ups do. And you know, as a married man who's thirty three years old, like that's what we do. And what, uh, the the eighteen year old version of me was like, "Are you serious? Like, babe, do we really like granite? Do we really need that? Like, for Micah's fine, you know." She's like, no, we need granite. Stop. Stop being cheap. I'm like, but, but we, like, I'd rather, let's go, let's go on an Alaskan cruise. You know, like, I like to travel. You know, I took my dad to Switzerland and Italy. You know, I dropped eight grand on the trip, no big deal. But to spend, you know, three on granite, I was like, dang, that sucks. You know, it's just people value things differently. Uh, and that's just one of the things that I have to understand as a married man. But as a homeowner, I got to get you thinking like a homeowner, we're not going to say there's upgrades in the kitchen, okay? Just no upgrades. It's just a generic kitchen. Go to the garage. There's two cars in the garage. Average family. Let's call the Honda Accord, Ford Explorer type of car. Honda, a lot. 60 G's. Um, um, yeah, we're not even gonna add that stuff in there. There probably would be bathroom, probably more. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with this one. The house itself. Okay. Now, my wife and I, we just uh, we just bought our house. Small. It's just the two of us. We're gonna start our family here this year. Uh, we just got married in October. Um, so uh, three bedroom, two bath house. It's going to run you about 200 grand. Okay. Now, when you go to the bank and you say, I want to buy this $200,000 house, you got to, they run your credit and they say, you have to put down a certain percentage depending on your credit. So you have to put 10 to 20% down on the house. So if it's 10% on a $200,000 house, how much was that check? That's a painful check to write. Another one of those checks that you don't want to write when you're 33 years old, I promise you. But they wrote the check, 20,000 bucks just to move into the house that didn't turn on the lights that didn't buy any furniture just to move in the house. Now, some of you got, ladies and gentlemen are going to show people that don't live in the $200,000 house. You follow me? You're going to show people that live in the three, five, $800,000 house. But if it's a $200,000 house, they wrote one check one time, 20 grand just to move in. In this room, you've probably never seen $20,000 in your bank account before. In this room, you've probably never had $20,000 in your lifetime before. But every homeowner you show Kako to wrote a check for at least twenty grand for the two hundred thousand dollar house. Are you guys follow me? Let's assume they live in that same exact house their entire life. They never move out of that house. So that's two hundred grand that they will pay for that house over the course of their lifetime. Let's put two hundred grand down. We're gonna do another one because it's my favorite one. Is cable and, and internet. Hundred bucks a month from age twenty-five to age seventy-five. Fifty years of their life, they're going to pay a hundred bucks a month for cable and internet. That is sixty thousand dollars that they're going to spend on cable and internet. Sixty grand. Put sixty grand in the calculator. How much are we up to? Cool. Uh, let's get this one. A kid. 
Most recent survey shows how much it costs to raise a, for a family to raise a kid from age birth to age 18, not including their college education. It includes medical expenses, education, hobbies and interests. How much it costs to raise a kid? Most recent survey says? It's like a quarter to half. It's a quarter million dollars. $250,000 per kid. Per kid, you better thank your parents, right? Okay, yeah, 250 grand. So uh, let's say this family only has one kid. One kid, add another 250 to it. What are we up to? We're up to $570,000. Did we include family vacations in this? No. Did we include any uh, electronics, computers, TV, uh, or computers? No. no. Did we include uh, any upgrades to their backyard or, or landscape? No. Did we include uh, you know, um, any uh, car insurance, grocery trips, any of that stuff? No. Every single family, and did we go pretty low on these numbers, by the way, pretty conservative numbers? Every single family, the lowest HM3 income family that you're going to show Cutco to has spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars before. So if they wanted to spend another couple thousand dollars again, is that weird for them? No. Not at all. In this room, we could probably combine for maybe five items or things that any of you have ever spent $1,000 on. But yet we just listed off a whole list of things that a family has spent and will continue to spend thousands of dollars on. Is it weird for them to spend thousands of dollars? No, because they're a family. They have jobs. They're in career jobs. They're older. They're experienced. They have a home. Does everyone follow me? You cannot think like broke college kids. You got to think like them. Light bulbs on this so far. Okay. You got to think like your customers. Here's a couple more light bulbs. Ready? Ready? I know you guys are thinking like families now. Now you understand that $1,000 is not that big of a deal. If someone wanted to spend three or four grand on a set of Wustop knives, it's not that big of a deal. It's, here's, here's a couple light bulbs, ready? All of the things that we just listed off, ready? The couches, the bedroom, all that stuff, what will they eventually have to do? Replace they will eventually have to replace all those items at some point in life, that's number one. Number two, to buy those items, ready? They use a piece of plastic, what is that thing called? A credit card, right? We talked about this before. They use this piece of plastic called a credit card. Now, how does a credit card work? They swipe it and they pay it later. That's how a credit card works, okay? They swipe it, they pay it later. Every one of those items they put on credit, here's why. They get perks. Like when we bought the granite, of course I used my credit card for it. I didn't go to my bank account and swipe the card. Why? Because I, I got a 1.5% cash back. So all of the things that I spent that 40 grand on, of course I put it on my credit card. Because I got 1.5% cash back for using my credit card. And then I just then I took the money from my debit card and I paid it in full so I don't have to pay any interest. You follow? But I got rewards for it. Some people get travel rewards. Some people get bonus or perks, uh, points. We do the cash back one. But check this out. Ready? Even if I didn't pay it in full, even if I didn't pay it in full, a lot of credit card companies have 12 or 15 or 18 months no interest. So they don't have to pay it off right away either. And then they consolidate smart business, a smart budget money consumers to consolidate the cards and then they get 12 months no interest. So as soon as the 12 months is up, they'll consolidate, rotate the cards and get another 12 months no interest. This is grown up talk for you. This is stuff I teach in Leadership Academy. But I gotta get you thinking like the people you're doing appointments for. So how they work, they put everything on their credit cards. Budget money consumers do this and they get perks for spending money. So here's what I want you to think about. Mom and dad have a combined credit card that they use for anything for the home. Mom goes to Bed Bath & Beyond and buys some Tupperware. Dad goes to, you know, uh, buy uh, groceries or whatever he does, right? Car insurance, cell phones, groceries. Dad goes to the bar to get some drinks. Mom goes to get a Manny Petty, chiropractor visit, trip to uh, Bush Gardens, go to Disney, go bowling for family night, run to the movies, go to the lightning game, whatever it is, right? How many transactions do you think the average homeowner, average family, puts on a credit card over the course of a month, a 30-day period, husband and wife together on one credit card, what do you think? 100. At least. At least 100 transactions. You ready for the light bulb? Every grocery trip, every time they run to the grocery store. This is, if, if, if you understand this, you're getting their name on this wall. If there was one extra grocery bill, every time mom went to Starbucks, was on that, that swipe. Every time dad went to any, anywhere, is on that credit card, ready? If there was one extra grocery bill, for 300 bucks on that credit card. Some of your customers, what, what's the point I'm making? They might not even what? 
Say it. Nervous. One more time. Nervous. Your Senator Chris might not even notice one extra transaction of 300 bucks. And if it's for five months, that's a $1,500 Cutco set. It is so insignificant to the people you're showing Cutco to. Insignificant to a homeowner who's married. But to you, it's a lot of money. Here's why. I don't know if you guys ever did this move. When you, you ever go grocery shopping with your parents when you were a little kid and try to sneak the, like, the Hot Wheels car, in the, in the, maybe it was a Barbie for, for some of you, but a little sneak to sneak the Hot Wheels car. I remember I used to get to the checkout line. What is this? Can we get it? No, put that back. We're broke. I thought broke ass family came and buy me a Hot Wheels car. How much is the, how much is this a cart of how much does a cart fill the groceries? Two fifty? Three hundred bucks? Swipe the credit card. Not a bat of the eye. Like my Hot Wheels car was gonna break the bank for my mom. You follow? It wasn't that we couldn't afford it, is that my mom didn't want to afford it. You see the difference there? This is the next point that I want to make sure is crystal clear. People buy anything they want. Anything they want, they will buy. If they don't want it, they say, I can't afford it. Here's my next third light bulb. We live in a society where people don't like to spend money and people say they're broke. Oh, I'm broke, I have no money. How many of you guys have a friend? I'm broke, I have no money, but they have a new pair of shoes. I'm broke, I have no money, but they afford cigarettes. I'm broke, I have no, I have no money, but I could go to Starbucks each day. I'm broke, I have no money, but I have a new video game system. I'm broke, I have no money, you fill in the blank, right? Because they broke, they have no money for things they don't want, but they have money for things they want. Does everyone see? Got it? So we live in a society where people are broke, I have no money, but yet they go take their family out for dinner. Do you guys have any idea on how much it costs to take a family four out to dinner? Not super nice. I mean, you, you know, you go to like a Burns, but they go to a Bonefish, an Outback. They go to, uh, you know, uh, a, a Seasons 52. They go to, uh, you know, any one of those types of places. I mean, even if you know, Applebee's or Chili's for crying out loud. Family four goes out, right? Easy hundred bucks. Up to 200 or more with drinks and appetizers and dessert. You guys follow? It's not an absurd amount of money to the people who are showing cocoa to. But for you, shoot. If you went out for dinner and your bill was 250 bucks, you excuse me? <laughs> Hold on, let me check my online banking real quick. $16, shoot. You guys follow? But you got to think like the people who are showing cocoa to. 100 transactions a month. An extra grocery bill on there, no big deal. Are we thinking like grown-ups? Are we thinking like family? If the light bulb hasn't happened yet, it's about to. Ready? Thank you. We talked about families. We talked about how they view money. We talked about how much they spend. We talked about credit card. We talked about people who live in a society that they don't like to spend money, but they always spend money on things they want. Ready? Let's talk about you for just a moment. How many of you guys have a friend, or maybe it's you, that goes to one of these places, PDQ, Chick-fil-A, Chipotle, Starbucks, Panera, uh, anywhere in that family three times a week or more. Three times a week or more, has a friend or you, goes to one of those places. Cool. Uh, how much does each trip cost? I know it's a very, you know, a smoothie can eight change bucks. compared to a burrito. Eight. Call it eight bucks. Eight. Cool. So we'll call it eight bucks three times a week. That's 25 bucks a week. Let's go with, right? That's $100 a month. Your broke-ass friends are spending $100 a month on chicken nuggets and smoothies. That is $1,200 per year that your friends are spending on coffee and burritos. Are you guys following me? Okay. But you're going to say that $1,000 is a lot of money for a family who has a career job and credit card and all the things that we just talked about. You follow? $500? Bucks, $100 bucks a month? They could get a small set of cut, though. Every one of your friends and you can get a small set of cutco if you wanted it for 100 bucks a month. You follow? You cannot think like a broke college kid. But if you did think like a broke college kid, you could still buy a set of cutco. But you have no high demand for the product line because you don't have enough value. But a family who cooks and they have family and they clean and they want convenience and they like quality and they have a desire for high-end stuff, piece of cake. You thinking like grown-ups? Cool. Let me take one or two or three of you. That's my 10-minute spiel on consumer psychology. You know, maybe 15 or 20, however long that was. 
but that I got to get you thinking like families, okay? And if you think like a family, what's going to happen is I'm going to give you the prices in a moment. When you write down that price on a sheet of paper and you pass in that sheet of paper and you look them square in the eye and you say, so what do you think, Miss Jones? Did you want to go and get that set today? Regardless of what the price is on that sheet of paper, you can confidently look at them and say, I don't care what that price is. You could buy it because you've bought it before. You've spent this much money before on everything else in your home. And I know if you wanted this bad enough, you could do it again right now. Do you want this bad enough to get it right now? How do you build a want? Said differently, how do you build a value? You read, cut, smile. You do those three things, value's high, it's the highest. You get to that appointment, you give them the price. Price doesn't matter. They're like, yeah, sure, let's do it. You guys got it? Two or three, two or three light bulbs. Who has one from that, my section right there? So we'll go, uh, we'll go Grant, we'll go Tyler, and we'll go over here to Santiago and, we'll, uh, and Isaiah. $300 isn't a lot to a normal family. No big deal. It's grocery bill. Excellent. People spend money on anything they want, anything, especially if they have the piece of plastic. What's that thing called? Credit card. credit card. They'll worry about it later, every time. It's not about their bank account. It's never about the bank account. It's always the credit card, always, because they get points. They get perks. I tell every one of my customers, Jones, I would run this on your credit card so you get extra points and perks and miles and stuff. Because what does that mean? That means, oh, you know me. You understand me. You're not this broke college guy I thought you were. Oh, okay. People feel comfortable doing business with people like them. Right, give them confidence. Excellent. We'll go Santiago Isaiah. And then anybody else? People spend a lot of money, like they could have basically bought like five sets of those already. All on on yeah, on like dumb stuff. <laughs> dumb to us, right? Well, or you guys, yeah, right? Probably dumb to them too. Really. In a lot of cases it is. Yeah. In a lot of cases it is. I could give you a whole list of dumb stuff that I bought. Probably you guys probably have some dumb stuff you bought too. Pizza. Right? Pizza. Pizza or Same thing? Anybody have a video game system at home? Who who has a, like a video? Who has more than ten games for that system? Yeah. How many of those games do you guys play? Two. So you have six games that you don't even play, and how much were each of those games? But you guys follow me? So we have a video game system at home, and then this free Fortnite game comes out, and it's like, oh, I have a thousand dollars in video games I no longer even play. Good good call. Good call, kid. Do you guys follow me? Right. You, you follow? So I, I just got to get you thinking like, duh, people spend a lot of money and, and, and they're all nonsense stuff, but with something they could buy once, use every day, never have to replace it, it'll save them money by owning it. Pretty, pretty, pretty no, no uh, guilt purchase to me, right? No brainer. So let's go to page eight. Let's go to page eight now. Let's go to our clothes. Let's get ready. So uh, who can start reading for us? Angel, thanks for volunteering. I appreciate that. Mrs. Jones, let me review why so many people choose to invest in Cutco. You will always have? Please, you're doing great. There are several reasons why so many customers choose sets. Cutco sets have the right tool for the right job. Cutco sets have a built-in discount, so it's cheaper. Sets come with a free cutting board and other free stuff. Sets are much safer because they come in a block or tray, and we have interest-free monthly investment options, so you don't have to pay for it all at once. Selecting the best option. When it comes to high-quality cutlery, it's like anything... Yeah, it's like anything else. There's a wide variety of quality and prices. Cutco is top rated, so we only compare to the highest quality brands. Did you guys You're doing awesome. So I read the bottom part? All right, I'll, cut, I'll, I'll stick it over for here. Thank you. I appreciate it, Angel. So on this sheet of paper, uh, if you remember from the first part of uh, you know the junk knife page, we say you can save 1600 you're, you're wasting. Average customer is wasting 1600 bucks on low-quality knives. Why? Eight, 10 bucks, uh, say 10 bucks a knife with eight knives in the set, $80 a set, times 20 replacements over a lifetime, that's 1600 bucks on low quality stuff. When I did the appointment with my parents, I went into my knife drawer, I went into my knife drawer, I opened up this knife drawer, this knife drawer, this knife drawer, I looked at all the knives on the countertop, I said, mom, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, I said, mom, you've already spent hundreds, if not over $1,000 in knives, and how many of these actually work? 
right? And if you don't buy Cutco today, that's fine, but you're eventually going to have to replace these again. So you're going to spend one or $2,000 on knives anyway on stuff that doesn't even work well. And then I said, if you have Cutco, you could eat out less a little bit. Why? Because if you buy something that's high quality, you're probably going to use it more often. So if you just use it one extra meal a month that you can save and have like pasta night at home and make the food and all that, you know, cook, cook with your Cutco, boom, it could save you 60 bucks a month, 12 bucks, uh, that's 12 months, 712 bucks a year, that's $18,000 you can save by eating out one less time. Plus, you can buy your whole foods and cut it up yourself instead of paying the grocery store to cut up your food for you, you could cut up yourself. Whole pineapples, watermelons, cantaloupes, frozen meats, whole meats, pork loins, all of that. That's where we're at. So we're saying, Ms. Jones, most people haven't had the chance to price high quality knives, but high quality, it's like anything else. There's a difference of variety. So this is our Wustaf. So then you go ahead and turn where it says uh, to uh, the prayer comparison price in Wustaf. Uh, Wustaf and Shun, those are the top competitors. Um, have you heard of them before? You know, some people say yes, some people say no. Uh, it just depends on whether or not they shop at those, uh, at those places before. Um, so then, uh, Trevor, why don't you continue reading for us, please? From uh, the, the, these are high-quality sets. These high-quality sets made overseas are two of the top-selling brands in stores. Each brand has different types of sets which range in, range in price. Woofstock is the most popular. The price for this roof stop set is... So you guys can see it on page 30, uh, or on page 12, it's 3400 3400 bucks for a full set of Wustaf. Now, the 18-year-old version of me was like, gosh, man, that's a lot of money. But the uh, homeowner, the married family version of me is like, oh, that's the same price as all the other household appliances and things that they've already bought before. So 3400 bucks, you can find it on sale for two grand. Yeah. Uh, there's some major differences between these brands and Cutco. Wustoff has mostly straight edges, so they need to be sharpened, which is hassled. They are not recommended for dishwasher, and the warranty is on manufacturing defects only. In comparison, Cutco has our unique wedge lock handles, exclusive double B stay sharp edge, and we have our four part guarantee, forever guarantee, including our free sharpening for 15 days. So, what we just said is what I mentioned earlier that the Wustoff set is usually about 3400 bucks, but you can find it on sale for about two grand. That's this set, this size set right here. They're really good. They're top of the line brands. However, Cutco offers more features, more quality, better guarantee. Therefore, it should be more money. That's essentially where we're at right now. Okay. Any questions so far? Feel pretty good. Cool. So, um, when something offers twice the quality value and it lasts forever, you expect to be at least twice the price. So, twice the price, you're talking four thousand bucks for your set of Cutco. So, for this set, four thousand bucks for your set of Cutco. Go ahead and fill in those blanks. So, the Wustaf set's thirty-four hundred. You find it on sale for two. Cutco's twice as good, therefore it should be four grand. That's your price comparison section. Any questions on the price comparison page right there on page eight? And as we listed before, items in the home that's four thousand bucks. Now what are, what are the items that are four grand or in that range for a homeowner? You get a TV, four grand. What else? Couches, Couches four grand. Mattresses. Yep, bedroom set, four grand. Any, any stainless appliances, four grand. All the granite over what, four grand. <laughs> Cabinet, uh, ca wood cabinets. Wood cabinets, well over four grand. Shoot, the, the freaking shaker cabinets we got, well over four grand. You guys got me? Cars, lawnmower. Dad might even have, if he, if he likes to golf, he might even have a set of golf clubs over four grand. If he likes to hunt, dad might have a, a couple guns over four grand. Right? A deck. If you have a deck in the backyard, there's a pool. You guys got me? Just a couple things. A couple ideas of some things. Okay? So, not, not crazy abnormal items um, as far as that goes. So as I said earlier, ready? So as I said earlier, our homemaker says the most popular one. That's this one here. It's the most popular set. It's for families cook two to three times a week. Has 10 basic tools we talked about. It comes with eight table knives, a block, a cutting board, and a sharpener. And we also have the homemaker without the table knives. If someone saw the cutting demonstration with the leather, what do you think they would say? If you ask them, do you think you go with the one with the table knives, what do you think they'll say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's getting the small yes before you get the big yes. That's like if the gentleman in the room are asking a girl on a date, you say, 
um, you, you get the small yes before you get the big yes. It's like, so do you, um, do you like Thai food or Italian food better? Which one do you like better? You like Italian food? Cool. And then you say, cool, do you want to go out with me Friday night to Italian food? So I get the small yes before you get the big yes. Is that what I'm So that was, so you get a small yes before a big yes. So did you like the one with the table knives? You did? You like the one with the table knives? Great. And then you're about to get ready for the big yes. What does the big yes look like? Well, Ms. Jones, the best part about this set right here, now I'll do this, this would be my sheet of paper. The best part about the set, Ms. Jones, is it's not over 4,000 bucks because it's not sold in stores. Matter of fact, the entire homemaker set is even less than the 3,400 at Wusta. Ms. Jones, a lot of people find it surprising. It's even less than the Wu stuff on sale at two grand. The entire Homemaker Plus 8 set is only $12.73. How do you feel about that price? That's prom night. Prom weekend. That's a weekend at Disney. It's a MacBook. Follow? You ready to see how and Dalila sold nine of these in her first 10 days? Dalila Kolar, she actually had a larger IB high school. I don't know if you went to Dalila, but Dalila Kolar, nine of these in her first 10 days. You ready? All she did was this. She says, Miss Jones, you know, most people, they don't buy this and pay it in full. Here's how they do this. They split it up over five months of only two seventy-five a month for five months, no interest. So Miss Jones, it's pretty much a grocery bill. So of you has a grocery bill on your credit card, and it's only 275. How small does that number look now on the same sheet of paper? It's sa- you're gonna spend this, it's gonna save you this, and all it is today is this on a credit card. And then she said, Ms. Jones, if you wanna do it today, instead of waiting till like next week, I will give you up to $275 in free cutco of your choice. Anything you want, I'll buy it for you up to that amount if you do it today. So what do you think, Ms. Jones? Do you want to go shopping, get your free stuff, and get your homemaker for plus eight and enjoy the enjoy the benefits of the product on for the rest of your life? For a grocery bill? Now you guys see why your friends like the job? It's a job. That that's it. You do those seven steps that we just walked through. You build rapport, establish company history, create the problems, solutions, sets mindset, price comparison of competitors, and then you show the price, write it on paper, explain the 5K, you ask them if they'd like to buy it. And when you ask them if they want to buy it, you smile and nod, keep quiet, you're getting the best product in the world for a third of the price of the competitor. And you never have to buy it ever again. And all it is is a grocery bill a month for the next five months. Give me some feedback. I can't tell what your facial expressions are telling me. I'm still thinking like it's a little college student. Like I'm still like, whoa, like that's a lot to me. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And I failed you. I apologize on that. Who else? I think, I mean, definitely if you, yeah, it just fits pretty well. I mean, if that's how much they spend on groceries each month. Then they spend that each week. Or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Each week. They can do that for, you know, a month or every for five months and then do it every day. Yeah. You ever go to Costco or Sam's Club? Too mm-hmm. much. Do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. Just stand at the checkout line. If you're, if you're still thinking like broke college kid, just stand at the checkout line. Just stand there for 30 minutes and take your phone out. And every single time someone spends over, or just to take a notepad, and every time someone spends over 300 bucks, just put a little tally mark. 30 minutes. And watch how many times you will see someone spend over 275 bucks at Publix or Sam's or Costco. And then sometimes you're going to see, holy shit, how much was that? 750? What the hell? Double tally. Double tally. <laughs> stand at Best Buy. Stand at Publix. Stand at Sam's Club. Stand at Costco. Stand at Williams Sonoma. Go to the freaking Apple Store at International Mall. <laughs> stand out there and just stand at the register with your little notepad and tally up how many times you watch somebody, a family type of person, spend that type of money. That's all you have to do. Go where families go, not where pro college kids go and start thinking like the people you're going to show cocoa to. Piece of cake. Cool? Mm-hmm. Piece of cake. And then go where broke college kids go. Go to freaking GameStop. Watch how many kids there are freaking spending no nonsense money on stuff that they don't even need to spend their money on. 
They just got graduation money. Where am I going? Nice, GameStop, let's go. You know? Graduation money, let's go to Foot Locker, let's go to a new pair of kicks, whatever it is, right? A pair of Jordans. That's, a pair of Jordans is probably about that much now. I don't even know how much they are now. It's crazy, right? It's a pair of shoes. This isn't like insignificant. It is an insignificant amount of money. You're talking to someone that sits down, you, you sit down with a customer who has a boat? You kidding me? You, you know what I mean? Like, that's fuel. It's like, all right? Any other feedback? Here's the, here's the best part. If you can have, that's what I said, you don't need to sell homemakers to be successful here, but you, I, I would highly recommend you to have the mindset of a homeowner so that way you can go through your appointments. But here's this goal. If that set works for them, great. If 10 people buy, if 10 people buy Cutco, how many do you think sign up for the homemaker package? If 10 people buy Cutco, how many sign up for this package? What do you think? Six. It's actually one. My office, maybe three. But usually about one out of 10 sign up for this package. Remember, our average sale is only 350. We're at 1273 right now, you follow? So that's not average, that's one out of 10 typically will sign up for this package here, maybe three out of 10. But we start here, because then we say, Ms. Jones, out of these items, we find that most people use the carving set least and also the butcher knife least. So we have a smaller set. Most people, when they don't buy this, it's because of one of two reasons. These are too many pieces or it's a little bit too much money that they're not comfortable spending that much money. So we say, no sweat. These, we have a set without the carving set, without the butcher knife. It's called the galley set. It's a few less knives, but it's a lot less money. That's the set my parents got, by the way. And then we show them the galley set. We say, this galley set's awesome, Miss Jones. Check this out. You still get the parent knife for small stuff in the yeah. air, trimmer for small stuff on the spatula spreader for, petite carver for, turning fork for, sure. chef knife for, vegetables, and then vegetable chopping. And then you have the slicer for. So you still get the entire galley set. Comes with six table knives in a block with a cutting board. I even buy you the bread. This set right here, Mr. Jones, you have this whole set. It's not going to be over 1300 bucks. Check it out. The entire galley set, all you're doing is taking away three knives and two table knives. It brings it down all the way to 919 That's 199 a month for five months, no interest. And I'll still give you up to 200 bucks in free cut if you want to do it today. Then you start with the bigger, like the bigger package and then go down. Yep, it's called the drop down. Is, and is that with the plus six or the basic? That's the plus six. Okay. And now don't worry about the blanks. I'm going to give you all the blanks tomorrow. I just want you to more understand the process. Today is all psychology and process. Tomorrow is going to be all like the, uh, you know, the little small stuff. But I just want to teach you the process first. Okay? That's a galley set. It's a fantastic set. $199, guys. That's like a phone bill for some people. One ninety nine for a family plan. One ninety nine pair of shoes. You can't leave Verizon spending less than one hundred ninety nine bucks for a new phone. One hundred ninety nine bucks. If you have two people this weekend that sign up for that package, three people. Let's say you have three people sign up for that package this weekend. That's almost three grand in sales. Three people sign up for that package, almost three grand in share. You know what your first paycheck is? Four hundred bucks. Three people sign up for the one ninety nine package. The amount of money that some of your shoes cost. And they have a set of cutco for the rest of their life. Let's go. You kidding me? Okay. So you guys are, I mean, I'm just saying, you, this, you, your friends love this job for a reason. It is, it is a piece of cake. We said at the beginning, it is a piece of cake. It is so simple. If that doesn't work, Miss Jones, no big deal. No big deal. Check this out. We have these starter packages. We call these uh, we call these the budget busters because even my broke friends can afford these smaller ones. Check these out, Michelle. There's seven different packages: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're all about the same price point, but there's different combinations for depending on what type of cooking you use. Out of these starter sets, which one did you like the best? And you flip and show them all the different starter sets. They pick out which one they like. They're all going to be roughly around the same price point, somewhere around the. 90 to 130 dollar a month range, somewhere in that range. So we're just going to use arbitrary numbers for today. I'll give you real numbers tomorrow. So Ms. Jones, that set will be about 500 bucks. It's going to be about 100 bucks a month. That's 25 dollars per week out of the budget. So Mr. Jo Mr. And Mrs. Jones, that's about 13 dollars for you, husband, and 13 dollars for you, wife, out of the budget. That's coffee on the way to work during the week, and you have a full set of cut have it forever, you'll use it for the rest of your life, and you could always upgrade in the future for the same amount of money you spend on coffee. And if you do it today, free cut go.
How do you feel about that? What does that mean? What does that even mean? Like, what do you mean? Anything they want. Super shears, veggie peeler, so ice cream so scoops. Totally it's a buy now bonus. It's the duffel bag. It's just like, like, just pick one. And it's, yeah. It's yours. Anything you want, it's yours. So it's like you an know. incentive. It's like the duffel bag. Yeah. Buy the cologne today, I'll give you this duffel bag if you, you do it today. Give it to well, you write it, you add it to the sale. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just add it to the sale. So we can do that, or we have to call the coach? Uh, you, I'm going to go through that tomorrow. You can okay. do it, but you want to call your coach. Okay. Here's the reason why. Ready? If you're trying on your shirt, you're looking in the mirror, you're like, I don't know. You're on the fence, and the sales associate's like, hold on, I'll be right back. They bring the manager stores. They say, I'll tell you what. If you do it today, I'll give you 20% off the shirt, okay. and I'll give you a matching hat for free if you want to do it today. Okay. You're like, all right, I was sold, but I'll, now I'm definitely sold. Right? It just makes it more comfortable. Yeah. That's what the coach will do. They'll hook it up. Got it? 10 of those. Ryan's right on. I, I asked Ryan, how many appointments would you go back in time if you could do it differently? What would she say? How many appointments? 10. ten. You put Cutco in front of 10 families this weekend. 10 families. You see your best five and then five other HM3s between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You do that, if 10 people sign up for one of those starter set packages, the $100 a month package, the broke college kid that spends $25 a week on Chipotle package, 10. Ready? You guys ready for a light bulb? Your paycheck, $800 this weekend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even make that at Wendy's. No one does. <laughs> it's Wendy's. Well, okay. it's probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to work at Wendy's. I just don't want to tell you. Like, crazy old school. Yeah. yeah. All right, but you follow me? Yeah. Okay? This isn't, I, I mean, I, I love, it's very cute that you bring up Wendy's. Like, that is that is cute. It is. It's totally cool. No, I get it. Publix, Wendy's, all the, yeah, I get it. I get it. But I got to get you thinking much bigger about how much you're worth. Okay. The only reason why you're getting paid eight, nine, ten bucks an hour at Wendy's is because that's what society says you're worth. Because you're 18 years old and that's all you get. I'm telling you right now, you think like a, a broke college kid, and you think like you're worth eight, nine, ten bucks an hour. You will be constrained to think that way for a very long time in your life until you break that pattern. I'm here to interrupt that pattern and say you are worth a hell of a lot more than what they're paying you. Go pay yourself and think bigger about how much you're worth here. Because I'll tell you right now, you follow everything I'm teaching you. This is not science. This is not, I mean, this is not an art. This is a science. You follow what I'm teaching you. You will get your name on that wall, making a lot of freaking money. You'll get your name on this wall, lots of recognition, and you'll open up opportunities for yourself. It is not difficult. That's why your friends recommend you to the job. That's why I have all of your friends working here. Why do they love their job? You see Mason, one of your one of your friends said Mason, Mason dreams about Cutco. Yeah, I believe it. I believe Mason has dreams about Cutco. I also believe that Mason just made $850 last week. And he worked three days around graduation. And he's 18 years old. He is a Chipotle guy. Are you guys following me here? Okay, you guys ready to go or what? All right. I mean, I'm just. I mean, obviously, I get excited. I get. I get intense. I get excited because I did this. It is. It is. It is so, so simple. Okay. Cool. So here's what we're gonna do. Now you have an. Oh, by the way. By the way, everything is sold individually. If you have someone that like loves, absolutely loves Cutco, and they're like, you know, I, I just, uh, I just decided they could buy one ice cream scoop. They could buy one knife. Hundred percent. Everything is sold individually. Just so you know. But the sets are a better value because they get the right tool for the right job. They're discounted. They get free stuff. They're safer because they come in a block and a tray. And they could do that five pay, easy play plan, plan so they could get more bang for their buck. But everything is sold individually. There's never a no sale. It's just that the representative doesn't show the customer everything. Like we sell coffee for crying out loud. A month's supply of organic fair trade coffee delivered to the customer's house. We have a partnership with Utopian Coffee from Rwanda, Uganda, Colombia, Jamaica, Costa Rica, wherever the freshest coffee is from around the world, delivers small batch roasted to the customer's house within five days of being roasted, freshest coffee around the world for $17 to try it out. They get a sampler pack for, for it will help them for about a month. And if they don't like the coffee, they get their $17 back and they keep the coffee. There's never a no sale. It's the representative just doesn't show everything. You follow? A cutting board. I mean, anything Cutco has, but we just don't show it. And that's why I'm teaching you. 
You, you provide great customer service. You get them excited by recut smile. Call me uh, or call your coach at the end. You're going to crush the job. It's so simple. And what's the worst thing that happens? They don't buy? So what? Take the L. You get sacked. No big deal. That's why you want to do like 10 appointments. So that way if one or two or three choose not to buy, no big deal. It stinks for them. They go back and use their old crappy knives. No big deal. No big deal. That's why, that's why we have it set up the way we do. So that way you don't have to put pressure on yourself or them. But I do want you to lead with enthusiasm and be like, listen, for a price you're going to spend on a pair of shoes for your kid, you know, and the kid's going to have to replace those shoes soon, you can get a full set and you'll have it forever. It's like, follow. Cool. Question, comment? I saw one over here. Yeah. So how much is, about how much is one knife? Uh, it depends on the knife. 100 bucks, 70 bucks. you know. Dep- depends on which item. And then how much do you get for a show? I let you borrow just under five hundred dollars in knives. I'll let you. I'll, I'll hook you up tomorrow, and I'll show you what it comes with: super shears, peeler, parry knife, trimmer, the petite carver, um, cutting board. Yeah, so you get enough. So they can buy like just individual knives. You don't have to get like a set. Absolutely, so the sets are better value. So they want to buy just like three simple knives. They can do that. Hundred percent. The sets are better value. Why? Because you get the right tool for the right job. Discounted, free stuff, safer, and they get a five pay plan. Which would you rather do? Yeah. One. Maybe you use two or three this week, but for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. I mean, they think that far down. I mean, you, you might need more than two or three for the next 30, 40, 50 years. How many knives do you have in your home right now, Michonne? Two or three? Probably more. Yeah, you need the right tool for the right job. That's why it makes sense to get a set. You could put 100 bucks down on a set, same price you'd pay for a dinner out with the family. Take it for a test drive. If you don't like it, send it back. Get a refund. But if you do it today, I'll give you $100 in free cutco. Just incentivize you. You want to try it out? You're going to spend more than 100 bucks on the three knives anyway. That's what your coach will say. If they say no, no big deal. What three knives did you want to get? You guys follow? It's a piece of cake, guys. You guys are going to, you guys are going to do well. Cool? Cool. So here's what we're going to do. Turn to page 20. Turn to page 20 in your training book. All right. So what we're going to do is many of you already did a great job with this already, uh, and I want to give some recognition to that. Uh, We already had uh, Angel and uh, we had Cynthia over 40 names that they came in with. So 40 names and numbers, uh, which is really exciting. And then we had Grant right behind at 30. So uh, Grant McGinty. So we we had um, three individuals over 30 coming into training today. Uh, I just want to say I appreciate that. I appreciate that because being organized is one of our one of our core principles in the business arena, right? Being organized, decisiveness, those are really important principles. So I appreciate that uh, you came in organized and prepared. Everyone else, no big deal. I mean, you're going to be here longer than the night, but the more organized you are, the easier it becomes. So our mission for every one of you is to get to 100 names and numbers as fast as possible. Um, it's kind of like your fuel to your business. Like if this is your if this is a car, that's your fuel to your business. A hundred numbers as fast as possible. It's not hard. I mean, like you said, you have a couple hundred friends on social media. It's not hard. Um, it just takes a little bit of time. It's not as fun as like doing the presentation, but it takes a little bit of time. So, so I just have it right here. A hundred numbers to kind of help you see. The faster you get to a hundred numbers, ideally by Monday night, that would be my, my goal for every one of you. After you sit down with grandma, your cool aunt, and your mom, right? You do, you know, you should get to write about a hundred numbers. Once you get there. So just to kind of give you an idea, that will probably yield about 60 appointments. Some just never enter their phone or you never get in contact with, whatever. 60 appointments, let's say 40 by 300 bucks for easy math. That is $12,000 you sell. When you sell 12 grand, you start making 30% for the rest of your life. At 60 appointments, you'll average at least five recommendations per. So now you have 300 recommendations of people to call. What does life look like when you have 300 people you can call and you make 30% of whatever they buy? That's called cut go through college. That's how our students pay their way through school. That's, that was, that's RJ's motivation. Why did RJ get to 10K this spring? So that way all summer, all fall, winter break, spring, all next summer before college, he's at 30%, and he's at 30% all through college. But he has, right now, RJ has three, like 300 something people to call. Mason has over 300 people to call. These guys would be stupid to not do this job through college. Why? I, I mean, if you're going to call make 30%, they go out on a Saturday, show cut to five people, three or four buy. They sell a grand, 1,500, two grand, 30%. They're making three to 600 bucks on a Saturday. 
You guys follow me? You do that two days a week, you're making a common paycheck for the college kid. That's what this sets them up for. But what it also sets them up for is if you do the math, 100 numbers, that's a $2,600 income off the 100 numbers. 2,600 bucks, that's $26 per phone number. So if I paid every one of you $26 right now for every phone number you wrote down on a sheet of paper, every name you thought of right now, and if you called your friend and be like, dude, I got a job, they gave me $26 just to write a name and a phone number on a sheet of paper. That's essentially what I'm telling you. Think like a business person, you see? You don't get it immediately, but you get it eventually as long as you follow the process. And that's what's exciting. Because what's cool is you could do that very quick. We talked about some people doing that in 10 days, some people 10 weeks. But you do that, that's your system. So let's talk real quick. Let's go through each of these categories. Try to brainstorm anyone you forgot about. Find anyone you forgot about that could be a possibility. We're gonna start with family. Now, minds are like parachutes. They only work well when they're open. So I'm just gonna ask you to have an open mind during this section, okay? So anyone that's a possibility that you could show Kako to, that you may have forgotten about. Now, those of you guys that already came in with 30, 40, 50 or more, Awesome. I always have people that do this right now, what I'm doing right now, and I always have people get to 70 to 100 or more right, right now through this thought job, because this is not people you're definitely gonna see. These are possibilities. So when I did this exercise with my manager, I thought of every one of my ex-girlfriends, I thought of my orthodontist, the principal of my schools, all my old teachers, I thought of uh, people my, 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 uh, my siblings hung out with, like their friends. I thought of uh, people my mom worked with, people my dad worked with. I thought about extended family, like my mom's cousins, my, mom, my grandma's siblings, kids, like my great cousins. I, you know, I try to think of as many people as possible. I didn't have their names. Like when the neighbor across the street, I didn't know their name. I wrote red pickup truck. That's what I wrote on this. I went home, I said, mom, who are those people? Oh, that's Jerry and Deb. Do we have their number? Went through the address book? Oh, yeah, we have it. I don't know if it's a working number. Cool. I'll eventually call them. I'll see. Eventually call them. Good thing I did. They bought a set and gave me 15 other recommendations to other neighbors I didn't have phone numbers for. But I, all I wrote down in this was red pickup truck. You see? So, like, you could write big head lady from church. You could write, like, crooked teeth lady. Like, you could write, you could write down how you describe them. That's fine. But as many as you possibly can think of that you haven't already thought of. Cool. We'll start with the family category, local out of town, and then we'll go across over here, parents, friends. That could be any vacation families, any holidays, Thanksgiving, barbecues, or Christmas time, that stuff. And then just go each category. And then you got siblings, friends, and you got teachers and coaches. Uh, don't worry about the top five at the bottom. I'm going to do that with you shortly. And then once you fill in the other categories, go to your cell phone and write down all the friends that you forgot about. Maybe you're at the mom at graduation. Maybe you saw the mom at a play. Maybe if you were ever in theater, that's easy. Because there was like probably 200 kids in theater. They're like, yeah, I was in the play. I was the little one. I was the tree in the back. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You were such a good tree. Yeah. You know, but you were in the play. That's easy. If you're on a sports team, that's easy. Yeah, I was number 33. I was on the team with your son or daughter, right? Those are easy. So think about sports teams, sports moms that have come to those. Any organizations, key, key clubs or, um, or volunteer organizations or uh, scouts, if you're a part of scouts, there's, you know, troops and stuff like that, neighborhoods. So I'll give you, a, I'll give you about, um, about six to seven minutes on this to fill in as many as you can to see how many of you guys could get close to 100 ideas of possibilities, uh, including the ones you already thought of. So see, I see how many other new ones you could think of that might possibly be good appointments for you. You have new ones. Yep, not the ones you already have. You already have those. In fact, I'm going to pass around a stapler. You're going to staple that sheet you came in with to the back of page 22. So you're going to staple the sheet you came in with to the back of page 22. doing this and I had my, I'll just talk while you guys are writing, but I had my, when I did my ex-girlfriend's mom, I wrote down, you know, Sarah, ex-girlfriend mom, and um, I was nervous as hell, like, there was no way I was going to call her, but then I was in a big contest, and I was like, I gotta need that one extra appointment, so I ended up calling, I was like, hey, Miss Loesch, it's Micah Bromowitz, how are you, I don't know if you remember me or not, but uh, I went out with Sarah back in, like, middle school, oh, of course, how are you? Good. I was hoping you could do me a favor. I got this new job showing Cutco as part of the training and do some appointments and no need to buy. I can pay to show it to you, but it would really help me out because I need 10 appointments a week to stay on track towards the scholarship I'm working towards. Uh, would it be cool? Would you be nice enough to have me over and do an appointment with me? Yeah, 
of course, come on over. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Did the appointment, fed me dinner, bought a small essential set, small starter set, baby, gave me 15 recommendations, one of which was her sister, who bought the same set, gave me another 12 recommendations, so I got 27 recommendations from those two set sales. Here's the kicker. The sister was friends with a woman who lived in the same neighborhood as John Bon Jovi. Rumson Fairhaven, biggest house I've ever been in up to that point in my life, and they bought $2,800 in Cutco. But I never would have that customer if I didn't see the sister of my ex-girlfriend's mom, and I never would have those people if I didn't do this exercise right here. So have an open mind. Have an open mind. You never know. You never know. Worst case scenario, they just sit on your sheet of paper. And you could continue passing a stapler around and just staple it to page 22, the sheet that you came in with. This is a group effort. Just keep writing. Just keep thinking. One on one. It'll be good. Think about churchgoers. Why? Because there's a directory to churches. If you're not a part of a church, think of people who are. Because if you could get your hands on a directory, I have students that spend a whole summer just going through a church directory. So um, if, you, um, if you're spiritual or religious or know someone that is, you could think of, I mean, that's tons of families right there. So church director, we had uh, Philip Marinola went to Lakeside Christian, and that was his whole summer. I ended up selling like 25 grand just to families through this church community. Same thing with neighborhood communities. Sometimes there's directories to neighborhoods. Like uh, we had uh, Dan Hunter was in East Lake Woodlands and got a uh, directory to his neighborhood, and he spent the whole summer, over 20 grand summer, just going through his neighborhood. I know Will's grandparents live in Avila, you know, so that's, uh, you know, you, you could get directories to areas and that can potentially get you a bunch more resources. Sports rosters, scouts. You can use, your, use your phones, use your social medias. You know. And store as many as possible. Obviously, it would be easier with your mom, too, but just think. As many as you can. back to like even little league sports teams you played on all possibilities that's all this is soccer players in here? How much are your cleats?
so we're good over granting cleats. And obviously the kids aren't buying them, the parents are. I would show every kid on the soccer team as well. And a lot of the kids uh, So just I'm just brainstorming with you guys. A lot of the kids get like more than one pair of cleats. It's like how much three pair of cleats at a time. Yeah. I that's why I'm using that. And same thing with basketball shoes. Any sports. Because that's a hobby. And they spend thousands of dollars on that hobby for their kid. Anybody play a musical instrument? What do you play? Piano? How much is a piano? A lot. What's a lot? Yeah, a little one. Yeah. How much is it? How much? 200 bucks for a piano. How many? Do you ever take lessons? Because if you think of any of your friends that play instruments, it's a lot of times, like a guitar, one guitar, 200 bucks, drum set, you know, way more, you know, plus lessons, those hobbies. Obviously, the kids aren't paying for it. Those are those are those are great prospects. Give another sixty seconds. So out of every name and number you have now, every single one you thought of, every name, because names are only about phone numbers, but every name you thought of between today and the ones you came in with, write that total number at the top of page 20. Is that stapler still working its way around? I just want to, the reason why I want you to staple it into your book is because I have students that leave notebooks at home or leave uh, you know sheets of paper around and whatnot. And uh, this is like the most important part of your business. This is like your, your, uh, this is your fuel. So add up all your totals, add them all up, write that number at the top of page 20, including the ones you came in with. Yep, back to page 20, yep. And I'm just gonna go down the line on which you signed in, just so I can kind of gauge on where you guys are at right now. Um, there's not a right or wrong, I'm just more curious than anything. So Angel, you came in with 50, how many you have now? I'm at 80 something. I didn't finish counting. You can finish counting as soon as you're done, shout it out. Michelle? Uh, 27. So you came at 17, got 10 more. Cynthia, you came in at 40, how many you have now? 75. 75. Tyler, I didn't get your total number when you came in. Schmitz? So zero, and now you have 25. Trevor, you came in with 20. How many have you now? Uh, like adding the two together. Yep. Uh, you had 20, now you're at 40. And then um, Isaiah, you came in. 40 now. Uh, Angel, you got your total? So 81. And then uh, Grant Walford came in 15. How many have you now? Uh, 23. 23. Colin Ray, you got came in with 10. How many have you now? 41. 41. Santiago came in with 25, how many have now? 30. 30. Grant uh, McGinty came in with 30, how many have now? 62. 62, doubled up, love that. Xavier came in with 10, how many have now? 22. 22, doubled up. Thompson came in with 15, how many have now? 40. 40, tripled. Uh, Tyler V, 16 you came in with, how many have now? Uh, 53. 53, tripled. Cool. 
So uh, overall, that was that was that was uh, right at about ten minutes. Nothing crazy, right? Um, and you already have that. I mean, mo you know, most of you guys are either right at halfway or close to halfway or over halfway to a hundred already. All you have to do is, you know, sit down when you sit down with your parents and you go through your appointments this weekend. Just get phone numbers for a lot of those people. No big deal. And then you ask them for other recommendations. So by the time Monday rolls around, you should have like right at 100 numbers. And that's the foundation that you can build your entire business on. Then all of the recommendations and everything pulls in from there like we talked about. So the mission is to just lay your foundation and platform. I'll teach you how to get recommendations tomorrow. Question? When you go to a friend's mother or parents, do you recommend having a friend there or no? It's up to you. I do because that way the friend is like, oh my gosh, this is all you do is your job hiring. <laughs> and that helps us get really good people. Yeah, I thought they were going to be comfortable as well. I love that. I mean, I love it when friends get a chance to watch their friends do the appointment. That was Ryan and Allison Quinton. She saw her do the appointment, and Ryan's like, oh, my God, you make you make money doing this? This looks like fun. And then Ryan was like, I got to do this job. So say, like, you're at your friend's house, and you do an appointment with, like, his parent, and then she has a, like, her, his parent has, like, a friend over, and she wants to buy stuff. Like, how would that work? Um, you place a sale. Yeah, you only do one appointment per household, of course, but um, and you want to avoid group presentations at all costs. They're not effective at all. Uh, there's a philosophy called group think, negative always the positive. So if you have three potential buyers, one's like, oh, I'm not going to do that, that's too much money, and then two are like, oh my God, this is a great deal, I'll buy a whole set, the negative can influence the positive. So you do three individually, and you get way more recommendations when they do it individually as well. Yeah. Uh, if group worked, I would teach it to you, it just doesn't. Great questions. What I want you to do is if I gave each of you a thousand bucks, my money, not yours, okay, and you were gonna bet on one person out of this list, one that you think are like, all right, this would be my number one person that I'd be like, okay, I cannot wait to show them cut go. This is gonna be awesome. I think they would buy the most from me. I think it would help me get off to the fastest start. This is my number one, my big fish, whatever it might be. Put that person down next to the number one spot here on who you think your number one is. The number one person you are most confident with. You are most confident that they see your presentation. Even if you cut them, you know they're buying Cutco from you. Like that, that's how confident you are. Put that person's name next to number one. And then do the same thing for number two. Once you figure out who your number one is, figure out who your number two is. So that way you have your top two. Once you have your top two, Pick out your top, top three, four, and five. So now you have your top five people. Your top five, best pot five, you're most confident with. You've heard a few people say that already throughout training. So your best five first. You know, who would you pick out? You know, who would you pick out as you're drafting your list as your best five? Once you have your best five, I would go to try to get to your best 10 or your top 20 if you can. So depending on the size of your list, of course, maybe you have only have a top five because you only have like 20 or 25 people at this point, no big deal. But some of you have more. Do you have a top 10? Do you have a top 20 or a top 12, top 15? I did this with Grant uh, uh, Lepresti and uh, you know he, he had his top five and then he made, a, he made a top 12, that's what he got to. And then when I met with him on Monday because he only did four appointments in his first weekend, and we looked at his top 12, and he still had like um, 10 of the 12 still left. I was like, dude, you sold what you sold, and you didn't even see 10 of your top 12 yet. So that got him excited. Last night, he booked up six or seven more appointments uh, ahead of him, uh, which is really exciting. So, um, And a lot of them are in that top 12, but it kind of brainstorms. So I would see if you could get to a top 10, top 12, top 15. If you have a top 20, by all means, go for it. But just remember, who, who falls under the category of your top? Big Fish, HM3s, or HM3s that are business owners. You know, those are your best prospects. Or the best five, like we talked about. Mom, grandma, but BFF's mom, neighborhood mom, cool aunt. If you can get to a top 10, top 15, top 20, go for it. If you only have a top five, that's cool. I want everyone to have at least a top five, but I'd love for a couple of you guys to have a top 10, top 20. Especially if you're trying to get off to a faster start. Curious more than anything, who'd you pick as your number one? Um, this she used to be my she used to be my art teacher, but then she turned into a real estate agent a 
So art feature like turned real estate agent. Yeah, she's like Love it. She just sold a mansion. What was it? Totally cool. I was just curious. Who you picked? She just sold a mansion like about a month ago. I think it was like four million. Cool. Excellent. Who'd you pick? Who'd you pick as your number one? My professor. Professor. Davis. Cool. Love it. Who'd you pick as? My you know? Godmother. Godmom. Cool. Thompson. Who'd you pick as number one? My grandparents. Grandma. Angel. Who's your number one? My aunt. Aunt. Who'd you pick, Trevor? Uh, my grandma. Grandma. Who'd you pick? Godmother. Godmother and Isaiah. My old team mom. Old team mom. Love it. Friend's mom. Uh, this guy that comes into the restaurant that I work at, it drives me always crazy. Okay, fair enough. Who'd you pick as your number one? Like, friend's mom, like, having a mansion. Yeah. Friend's mom, cool. Who'd you pick? Friend's mom. Friend's mom. And Tyler, who'd you pick? Friend's mom. Friend's mom, cool. So you pick, so whoever you pick, right? Um, I would try, if you can, if you can, try to see them tomorrow night. Almost like invite yourself over for dinner on Friday night. And, you know, depending on your relationship with them, if you can. If you can't, no big deal. But if you can, I would try to. Yeah. Because you're most confident with that person. See if you can see them right away. Cool. Because that's what the, the first weekend is not about comfort. You're going to look awkward. You're going to feel awkward. It's going to like be sloppy. Like the first time you kiss someone, it's going to be like awkward and sloppy. You miss the mouth. Like it's weird. You know, that's why you got to get confidence first. It's not about practice. It's not about comfort. It's about confidence. Right? So you do your best five to build your confidence. And if you're most confident with that person, that's perfect. That's what we want. Get your first sale right under your belt, right out the gates. Friday night, boom, you have that first order. If it's a set, perfect, you hit your first pay raise. You know, if it's a smaller order, cool, then you hit your first pay raise on Saturday, but you get that confidence under your belt. That's kind of what you want. Okay? Cool. So now let's go to page 25. Let's take a peek at your schedules and see uh, what you can actually get accomplished this weekend. So uh, let's take a peek here. So we have... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So your schedule is going to look like this. Everything I put on my sheet, I want you guys to put on yours. Okay? So everything I put on my sheet, you want to put in yours, and then I'll have you change it. So tomorrow, Friday. Tomorrow's training is from 1130 to 630. And that's day one, or day two, rather. Now, I mentioned, I'm going to, for those of you guys that throughout training are getting pretty excited about, like, man, I feel like I could sell 10 grand or more. I feel like, I can get that uh, two to five K in income or the eighteen hundred dollars for free cuckoo, VIP night, dirty thirty, the radar, any of that stuff, put in ten o'clock as your ten K coaching. So ten K coaching at ten o'clock and come in uh, come in that ninety minutes early and I'll show you how to how to do it. Oh perfect. I already did it for you. Okay. Excellent. That's it's pretty much what I'm doing right now in this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's always one. You got Congrats. You did it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So then I would say 7 o'clock Friday, you put that dollar sign. That's your money appointment. 7 o'clock Friday night. I usually get out a little bit early on day two of training just because I get a lot done the first day. Uh, so I think each of you could and should be able to do that first one if your schedule allows it. But for right now, hypothetically, let's assume you're open. You put one for 7 o'clock. If you really wanted to, you could put one at 9 o'clock too. Maybe that's your parents or whoever you live with. So if your parents wasn't your number one, you see your number one and then see your parents right afterwards. Something like that is a possibility. Saturday morning, we sell more homemaker sets before 9 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday mornings than any other time of the week. That's the grandma spot. The reason why is because grandmas are up early. That's like lunchtime. 8 o'clock, that's like lunchtime. For you guys, that's like, oh my God, I've never seen 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. But for grandma, it's like she's up and about. So I would recommend... Again, thinking like a college kid, don't think like a college kid, think like a family. Open up those spots in the morning. I'm going to put 8 a.m. each of those mornings, but for you, maybe you don't do it. I'm just going to throw it out there as a, a possibility. So we're going to put a dollar sign at 8, then we're going to put another one at 9.30, then we're going to put another one at 11, and then another one at 12.30. So you have 8, 9.30, 30, 11, 12, 30. Then I'm going to jump two hours down and put one at 2.30. Just in case you're running behind, you give yourself a 30-minute window to catch up. Then I'm going to put one at 4, one at 5.30, one at 7, and then one at 9. And I give that two-hour window just in case to give you some time to catch up. So it looks like this. So you have dollar signs all the way throughout the day. Okay? Then Sunday is going to look the exact same way. You make Sunday look the exact same way, except don't put that 9 o'clock appointment spot. Because what do you think you want to do on Sunday night in order to make sure you have appointments for next week? You want to make phone calls. You got it. 
Sunday night, everyone's where? Home. That's why they put Sunday Night Football. That's why they put like Grey's Anatomy and, uh, and House and all these favorite top TV shows, the Oscars and Grammys. It's all Sunday nights. Why? Because everyone's home. That's when you want to call people because everyone's home. So I would highly recommend you to have some calls in your schedule Sunday evening. Now Monday, I see you guys for your advanced training. So cross off from 10 to 2.30. That's your advanced training. Then I would do a dollar sign at 3, 4.30, 6, 7.30 during the weekdays. Uh, that's what I would do there. You have four appointment spots potentially after advanced training. So your schedule will look something like this. So I want each of your sheets of paper to look like this. So buddy check. Make sure buddy check papers. Neighbor's paper looks like this. And we're going to do that here in just a moment with everyone. We're just going to buddy check. So yours is really good. It was like kind of off. But yeah, a little bit. By like 30 minutes. Yeah, it would be like called for it. Yeah, it was a little outdated. That was a, that was from like a spring, so that's where I was doing the advanced training on Sunday. So you could, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could adjust accordingly. Sorry about that. All right, cool. So you guys got this? Okay. All right. So now what you want to do, now that you have your schedule mapped out, this is what an all-in schedule looks like. This is an all-out, full-out, maxed-out possible schedule if all you did was eat, sleep, and breathe cutco this weekend. We do that first. Then what we do is we cross off your obligations. So then if you have another job, cross off your other job. If you have church, cross off church. If you have any set-in-stone obligations that cannot move, cross off those obligations and specific time frames, not like the whole day, and then just label exactly what you have going on at those times. So you like, you know, you can cross off church Sunday from nine to 11. If you have another job, you cross off from 12 to five, you know, whatever it might be. So you cross off your obligations. How long is an appointment? It's, a, it's about an hour, but when you're brand new, I like to give you guys 90 minutes to two hours apart just because they might feed you they haven't seen you in a little bit. There's some chit chat, catching up, you know, talking about school and whatnot. So that's why I like to give yourself that little buffer of like 30 minutes to an hour just to be safe. Yeah. Okay. Once you guys cross off some things, it's either you're confused or you have nothing going on. So the money is appointments. Those are availabilities. Those are appointment possibilities. Possible appointments. All the dollar signs are possible chances for you to make money this weekend. That's all that is right now. This is not what you're going to do. This is what's possible. Okay? And anything you cross off, label what exactly you have going on at those time frames. Because tomorrow, you're going to take a picture of this schedule and send it to your coach. So that way they know when to not bother you and when you're available to chat if they need to set up a call with you. Okay? Got your dollar signs? Good. Now what I want you to do is if you, for some of you, you have an open schedule, it's exciting. So where it says goal, goal is how many appointments you could do if you wanted to. So you're going to see how many dollar signs you have open for that day that's not crossed off, and you put that under goal. So for those that are completely open, Friday would be how many? Two. And then Saturday would be one, two. So it would be nine on Saturday, eight on Sunday, and four on Monday. Do, then do we include the ones that aren't? So that, like, do you include all of them or only the ones that are not crossed off? Only the ones that are not crossed off. Only the ones that are not crossed off. So anything after you crossed off your work or your um, church or any of that stuff, how many dollar signs are left over? That's your goal of what you could do each day. Okay? I have to talk to you about the education. We'll talk one-on-one. Okay, so then you have that. You're going to take that number and put it at the top. Put it at the top. Add, add, yeah, add those four numbers up. Add those four numbers up and put it at the top of the page. Okay, that's what you could do. That's not what you're going to do. That's what you could do. Our benchmark here, I say 10. Like I said, 10 is a really good target because it gives you, a, it errs on the side of caution but it also gives you a chance for success. So, for example, if you do 10 appointments, watch. So if you did 10 appointments between these days, 
10, 10, 10. Average says you'll probably have six or seven by. You'll probably sell, uh, you know, maybe that average order of 300 bucks, you sell like two grand, you make like 250 bucks. That's average, that's most of the people that I train. That's usually where they land. If you have a, a bad weekend, you have a rough weekend, let's say five by, maybe they only buy like 200 bucks, that's a thousand bucks that you sell. So this one is like 1K, you make base pay of at least 145 bucks, but you still hit your first pay raise and you still feel confident with your new job. You got a promotion your first weekend on the job. Over here, you have an error on the side of caution, eight to nine, you could do. Now you figure out, okay, how many of those do you want to do? How many do you want to do? So we got that number. You might not want to do the early morning appointments. You might not want to do the late night appointments. So out of that, say that number at the top, I'll use you as an example. So X has 23 opens full time, right? But he says, you know what? I only want to do how many? 15. 15. So he'll put 15 next to that and he'll circle 15. Now he's going to pick out each day by day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. How would you like to break down those 15 appointments? Everyone see? And you're picking when you want to choose your hours of operation. Now, like when you go to a business and it says business hours, this is when I'm open and this is when I'm not, that's essentially what you're doing. I'm teaching how to think like a business owner. Say so like Wendy's or Publix, they set their own hours and then they say, this is when I need you to work. Versus here, I'm saying, this is when I want to work. I'm choosing my schedule. I'm choosing how many hours I want to work, how much I want to make. You're choosing your, your paycheck right now. It's amazing. So you break it, so you break it down. So if you said 15, cool. So each of you do this exact same thing. Each of you do the same thing, and then where it says actual, that's how many appointments you actually want to do on each of those days. You actually want to do for each of those days. Yeah. So indecisiveness is not is not the goal of what we want right now. Decide now and be flexible later. Okay? You can always change it, but you want to make decisions. You're you're the boss, right? So you want to act like the boss. Can you imagine if you're, you showed up to work and your boss is like, oh, I got to think about it. I can't make a decision today, right? You got to fake it until you make it, right? So pretend, pretend like you knew. If you knew how much money you wanted to make this weekend, how much would that be? And I get it. There's going to be things come up. You might not, you know, mom says, actually, we have these plans, whatnot. That's the beautiful part of being flexible. If you have your other job, you can't call them and say, oh, actually, mom said we have plans. We're going to dinner. I can't come into work tonight. But here, you can change up. Okay, I knew I was going to do these appointments here, but I'm going to move them over here, and I'll go to dinner, and then I'll make up these extra two appointments at another time this weekend to still have my weekly number that I want to hit. It's amazing. But that's why you never want to try to do 100% of what's available to you. Like, you have availability of 23. You probably... It's, it's un, unneeded and um, impossible. You're setting yourself up for failure to say, I want to do all 23. You give yourself that cushion. If you have 23 open, I like 15. It gives you an eight appointment cushion. If you have 11 availabilities, I'd probably go for like seven. You know, if you have 15 openings, I'd probably go for like 10 or 12. Well, if you cross them out, but you later on, like, feel like you want to do it, can you go back and do it? Yeah, it's your schedule. Yeah. Yeah, it's your schedule. What if you just have a blank day and you wake up that morning like, I want to make some appointments? Um, that's not the smart. That's not a smart business owner. It's not a smart business owner at all. That's why we premeditate our schedule. We do this once a week with our reps. We don't let students do that stuff. Could they? Yeah, but it's not good because you're relying on somebody else to be available on the day that you all of a sudden want to work that same day. But you're talking to professional HM3 types. They're not just waiting by their phone, waiting for the college kid to call them. That's why we call today Thursday to book up Friday, Saturday, Sunday appointments. If you wake up tomorrow and say, oh, I want to do appointments on Saturday, right? Wake up Saturday, I want to do appointments today. It's like too short of notice. You could get maybe one or two, but it's going to be tough to get a full day's worth of work booked up on such short notice. That's why we start calling now. All my people already did their calls last night. We do them Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights, book up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday nights, book up your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that's how we get you in that cycle. And then you scoop up a few extras when you need to. Good question, though. Cool? All right, so that way I have your, um, I have your numbers. All right, what was, uh, what were your uh, totals? And um, we'll have to, we'll update the board here in just a moment. So how many are you shooting for? So let me uh, put that on here. So I'll just go down the, I'll just go uh, again down the line. Uh, so uh, let's see here. So Angel, how many was it that you wanted? Like how many appointments were you? 
the, uh, the actual, not the goal. Uh, 11. Okay. And then Michelle? Um, Amy and Cynthia? 10. Tyler Smith? 13. Trevor? 14. Isaiah? 13. Grant Wolford? 11. Colin Ray? 10. Santiago? 10. Grant? 10. Xavier? 15. Thompson? 14. Tyler? 13. Cool. So this does not bind you to this number. This is just what we'll try to help you hit. If you fall short, no big deal. We're not going to yell at you. We're not going to make you feel bad. But we'll do our best to try to help you get there. Cool? That's all. Damn right. Did you just turn that up? Oh, I'm just kidding. All right? Cool. So let's go ahead. So now, what do we have? We have your people you want to do appointments with. You have your schedule so you know when you want to do the appointments. You guys see how this works? It's kind of cool if you think about it. You're business owners. This is how a business runs. Now you say, all right, what do I say to these people? How do I call them? So we're going to transition into that. And um, so we're going to transition that. So go ahead and turn to page 23. So page 23. Oh, Grant, can you mind, do you mind starting to read the top of page 23 for us? Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> your success during your first week with Vector will be determined by <clears throat> quantity of MAC slash M or HM3 appointments. It's a numbers game. More MAC slash HM3 appointments equals more sales. See your best customers first. Top five customers. Don't ever, don't overemphasize the phone the the purpose of your call is schedule Talk is incredible, but they won't understand how great it is until they see it. Speak directly to who is. That, by the way, that's a big point, right? So your job on the phone, the phone, just like setting up a doctor's appointment, you don't diagnose the patient on the phone. You just set up the appointment, right? Same thing. It's not like all about Cutco. It's like, hey, you notice how the phone sounds like, hey, uh, you know, hey, ex-girlfriend's mom, it's me. How are you? Establish the connection so they know who you are. For you guys, you're calling like aunt and neighbor and all that. They know who you are. And it's like, uh, I got a new job showing Cutco. I need to do some training appointments. I'm working towards paying my way through school. And I just need 10 appointments by the deadline, by Monday. So can I stop by, right? You see? Super simple. The phone conversation takes maybe how long? Five uh, seconds. Not that exaggerated, but maybe two minutes, two to three minutes tops, right? So in about a 45 minute window, you should be able to book up if you're just working and making your calls, five, six, seven, 10 appointments, right? And get most of your appointments booked up. That's our, that's our goal. So it's a concentrated period of time, just knock it out, rip off the band-aid, boom. Kind of like going to the gym to get a workout versus like procrastinating, dilly-dallying at home and checking the fridge and checking your phone and checking the internet, right? Just go to the gym, get the workout in, then go home, right? Cool. Excellent. So um, uh, speak directly to who you want to schedule with. So if you want to call your friend's mom for an appointment, get a hold of the mom, not the friend. Here's two things that you could do. Number one, you just call the friend and say, hey, are you what? Are you home with your mom, right? Or number two, if they're not home, just say, hey, what's your mom's number? I had a favor to ask her. It's for a new job. I'm trying to save up money for school. Thought she might be nice enough to help out. You guys see? Yeah, so, so and text, text is totally cool. Here's the thing, though. Text opens up the invitation for them to ask more questions. But it just takes more time. You could, but the people you're close to, you could say, hey, what's your mom's number? What's your mom's number? What's your mom's number? Copy and paste. But if you haven't talked to them in a little while, but you think their mom could be a good appointment, I would call them. Hey, I know it's kind of random. I just had a favor for your mom. See if she might be nice enough to help me out. Boom. And in fact, there's a page in your training manual, page 31, if you want to take a peek at that. It's, all, it's like a sample script of what you could say uh, in a text message or a phone conversation to ask your friends for the parent's number. So page 31. Hey, I need your help with something. Start a new job. I'm a huge contest. I got a scholarship. I have to do a real quick presentation for people. Well, over 30, I have a house. I think your parents might fit that description. I have to actually call them personally about it. Even if they're too busy, it's fine. It helps me just call them and ask them about it. Could you shoot me your mom's number? Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Something like that. Cool? So you have that there uh, just in case you need it. All right. Next one. Uh, Cynthia, why don't you read that one? Uh, don't text. Don't text to set up the appointment. It's not there to trust them or it leads to miscommunication. Create the right habits and call. You got it. You got it. I'll tell you right now. Ready? I'll be vulnerable with you. I hated making phone calls like I nearly quit the job because I hated making phone calls like I wouldn't even call the pizza delivery guy I hated making calls like I did not like making calls and um, it just didn't feel comfortable for me like especially reading a script to my like friends and family like it felt weird for me it felt awkward 
Um, so I was super uncomfortable with it. And I would do anything I could to just use text message or whatever. But um, my manager really helped me understand. He's like, Mike, why did you start doing this job in the first place? And I was like, well, I really want experience and money. And he's like, text is not going to be effective. And you also rob yourself of the phone experience and communication skills that you want to get from the job. And he's like, how long does the awkwardness really last if you just ask him for a favor? He's like, it's only going to be maybe five seconds at most because once you get into the conversation, it's pretty easy. So he coached me through it. He said, who's the least scary person you'll call? I called my friend's mom. And then I called my mom who was in the kitchen while I was in the bedroom. And I called my other friend's mom. And I called my aunt. By the time the night was done, I booked up 12 appointments. So what went from me being really, really nervous and nearing the, the contemplation of quitting to booking up 12 appointments. I showed up the next day ready to go. I had 10 appointments that weekend completed out of the 12. Two had a reschedule. And I ended up hitting my first pay raise first weekend on the job. Made like a, it was like a $160 paycheck. My second full week on the job, my second week, my first full week, I made a $422 paycheck and never looked back. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting as far as that goes. So, But I agree, always, uh, always use the phone. Speak of the wife, she's the easiest customer to call. Stress facts, not a question of buying or selling. A lot of people tell you, I'm not gonna call, I'm not gonna buy anything. Guys, that's weird if they said I'm gonna buy stuff. Oh, Kako, I never heard of it before. I'll buy some stuff from you. Those are the people that say, when you go to the mall, you say, hey, do you want to go to the mall with me? I don't need anything. It's like, yeah, I'll go to the mall. With and then what happens? I don't need anything, but I'll go to browse around with you. I don't need anything, though. What happens? They They're the ones that buy stuff. That's me. That's me and my wife. When we go to Costco, I don't need anything at Costco. And then they have the little sample testing thing. They have these vegetarian uh, muffins that were made out of vegetables, muffins made out of vegetables, and they were delicious. So, I'll, I, of course, I got a $13 box of muffins, right? So um, I needed those. They're delicious, by the way. Pretty awesome. Just saying. But uh, so it's, it's not, hey, no big deal. I, I get paid just to show it to you. I just need as many appointments as I can get. Oh, those are some of your best customers. Because they're not saying no, they're not going to buy to you. They're saying that to themselves. Uh, next one, always give a choice of two times. Put a star next to that one. Put a star next to that one. That one's really important. Always give a choice of two times. Because that's the yes or yes question. Did you catch in the beginning when I said, do you want to get a cup or a bowl of soup? I didn't say, do you want the soup, right? I didn't give you a chance to say what? I didn't give you a chance to say no. It's a yes or yes question. Does everyone see? If you ask a customer, say, can I come over and do an appointment with you? They could say no. If you say, Graham, I'm really excited to do an appointment with you for my new job. Can I come over Friday night or do you think Saturday is better? Saturday night? What about 6 o'clock or 7.30 better? 7.30? It's always a yes or yes question. Does everyone see? It's a life skill. You want to go to the movies tonight? Yeah, sure, we want to see. I don't know. What do you want to see? I don't care. What do you want to see? It don't matter what you want to see. Pick out your two movies you want to see. Offer it to them. They pick. They feel like they made the choice, but it's one of your two options. All right. Cool. So always give a choice to two times. Specific time. Make sure they write it down. Schedule, you know, 90 minutes, two hours apart. Star this one. Not everyone will answer their phone. Use the four to one rule. What the four to one rule is, is genuine, generally speaking, not everyone picks up the phone. So if you called four people, one picks up. So if you want to book up 10 appointments, you want to anticipate of making 40 calls. You follow me? So you, I don't know who's going to pick up and who's not, but you want to get in that mindset. It's not immediate gratification, okay? So to make sure you don't think in those terms that if I call one person, I get one appointment. If I call four people, I get one appointment. So just kind of have that mindset in, my, in mind. If they don't pick up, don't worry, no big deal. Um, I, I would just call them at a different time. We do what is called the double tap. Uh, we find it's a 30% increase in pickups. If you call them, wait, and then redial. So call and then redial immediately. We find there's a 30% increase in pickups because they see the number call them twice, and uh, they're more likely to answer the phone to see what it's about. I wouldn't text, and I wouldn't leave a voice message. People don't check the voice messages, or if they do, they forget to call you back. Um, I would just call in a different wave. So we'll do one wave here today. Then if you want to do another wave tonight around 8.30, if you want to do another wave tomorrow morning before you come in, and then maybe another wave during uh, you know, lunchtime tomorrow. By the time you're done with all those four waves of calls, you should have your goal hit. Okay? All right. Uh, next one. Don't leave a message. We said that cuckoo owners are the best. We talked about that today. Call in waves. I just said that. Eliminate distractions. So uh, that's why we make calls here. I like making calls here. Phoning is working. Once your appointments are set, you're done working. Then you have fun to do the appointments. Don't call ahead. They a lot of times reschedule. Urgency. 
Let your customer know that you're committed to your goal and you have a deadline and disappointments are really important to you. So go ahead and turn to page 24. Let me show you what this sounds like. It's super, super simple. So I'm gonna call my uh, mom and dad again over there, uh, Miss uh, Angel. So uh, ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. Oh. Hi. Hey, Dad. It's Mike. How are you? Good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How was your day? It was good. 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 Still recovering from the uh, bolts loss, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Feel you. It's been hurting all day. Is mom there? I have a favor to ask her. Yeah, she's here. Cool. Can I talk to her? Yeah. Awesome. Hi, son. Hey, mom. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Dad's still sulking, huh? Oh, wait. I got it. I understand. Well, hey, um, mom, I had a favor to ask you. I'm glad I caught you. The reason I'm calling is I just started a great new job showing Cutco. By the way, what did I do before I dug into the phone call? Yeah, I warmed it up, build rapport, chit chat. You know how to you know how to warm it up. You know how to butter someone up before you ask for a favor. You've been doing it your whole life. That's how you got the extension on the grade for school. You know that's how you got the twenty bucks when you needed it. That's how you got the nice car when mom you know mom had, you know, was out of town, right? So I got it. So butter them up. Uh, as part of my training, I'm required to put on some initial training appointments. You don't have to buy anything. I get paid just to show it to you. I just want to do, that's where you'd put that number for, you know, whether it was a 10 or an 11 or a 13, 15, whatever your number is, I want to do number of appointments by Monday night to hit my goal. So go in and fill in those blanks. Now, I'm going to give you a phrase that I'm going to have you write in. It says, you don't have to buy anything because I get paid to show it to you. I want you to say, I know it's Memorial Day weekend, but... So right after it says paid just to show it, right in next to that, I know it's Memorial Day weekend, but I want to do, I want to do 12 appointments by Monday night to hit my goal. The reason why you say that, any, any ideas on psychology, why you would want to say that? It makes them think that that's more important than going out. Yeah, I like that. They view you differently. Most stereotypes of you kids is that you're lazy, you want a media gratification, you don't want to work for things, right? I like that. Why else? Here's the, here it is. You'll learn this in a psychology course. You would handle the concern before the concern exists. That's what it is. So if you know your friend already ate dinner, but you want them to still join you for dinner, what are you going to say? Hey, I know you already ate, but I still want you to join me. Because now you handle the concern before they could have the concern. Light bulbs, no? Jeez, you're a tough crowd, man. Thank you. My goodness. I'm teaching you guys gold here, man. Gold. So, uh, so I wonder if I could stop by on day, at time, or would time be better for you? And those are your uh, two options. You see how that works? See how it offers the two times? So all you have to do is read this, but if you forget to read this, just make sure you give a deadline. I have a deadline by this day. Why do you give the deadline? To create what? So it's urgency, right? Because if I put it, if I say, I just need to do these appointments, like, let's just do it next week. You know, say, no, 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 I have this deadline. It's a self-imposed deadline to create the urgency. Why is it important for you to do it by Monday night? Because that's your what? That's your paycheck, right? So if you don't do it by Monday night, you don't get a paycheck this week. So you have to create that urgency. Does it, you see? So that's why you just want to, if you forget what I'm teaching you, just read. And if you forget to read, then at least you follow those principles. Offer two times, give a deadline, warm it up, butter it up before you ask, you know, for the favor. But just read. It's so much easier. So I want to know, Mom, can I stop by on Friday night at 7 o'clock, or do you think Saturday morning at 8 a.m. would be better for you? Um, Saturday morning. Saturday morning? Thank you so much. This really helps me out. Do you have a pen? Yes. Yeah. Could you put it in your planner, your schedule, your calendar that I'll be over at our house on Saturday at 8 a.m.? Saturday at 8 a.m. Do you know how to get there? I do remember. I do remember. And can you also write down my confirmation number? It's just so my manager knows I'm doing the appointments. It's 3209. So everyone go ahead and write that in, 3209. That's your office number. That's how we confirm you're doing your appointments. 3209. 3209. And this appointment, Mom, is really important to me. I'm counting on it to get my schedule booked. So if something comes up and you have to reschedule, I won't get paid for the time slot. So are you sure this time definitely works? 100%. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to her appointment. And will Dad be there too? I hope so. All right. Awesome. Cool. I'll see you then. Love you. Bye. Everyone say that sounds like pretty easy. It's scripted in a way, a conversation sad. So that's why all you have to read this. 
even though it felt super weird with my mom sitting in the kitchen and me reading this in my room, it works. This is the phone approach for you to call your friends, your family, people you're close to, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. Now, if they ask a question, if they ask a question like what is Cutco, or if they say I already own Cutco, or they ask how long does it take, or if they have a conflict that the, those times don't work, that's all here at the bottom. It's all here at the bottom. So if Tyler's mom says, oh, what is Cutco? What are you showing me, sweetie? He would just say, it's kitchen stuff. I'm sure you have a ton of it, but I get paid to show it to you. So would time or time be better for you. And he asks a yes or yes question. By asking a yes or yes question, you sound confident. That's why you ask that. Fake it till you make it. If you're not confident, just at least pretend. I already own Cutco. Great. I get paid whether or not you show it, whether or not you get something. I'd love your opinion. Play me some pointers. I get paid anyway, so would time or time be better for you? How long does it take? Maybe about 45 minutes or so after that. It's up to you, so would time or time be better? Oh, that time doesn't work? No problem. What day is least busy for you? Saturday or Sunday? Saturday? Cool. What about time or time? And then you just pare it down. Just offer two times. Cool? Question? There was a question over here. So what happens if, like, they can't set up a appointment by that time or whatever? Oh, uh, well, then I would just move. I would, dude, you're, you are a magician, dude. Wow. All right. Um, if, if for some reason the time doesn't work, uh, that, like, they're on vacation. So, like, when you make your appointment with your parents, do you have to call them? Of course. Like, you call your parents it's a training appointment. It's a, here's two things, ready? Number one, it's a training appointment. Okay. Number two, how you treat them is how they think you're going to treat their recommendations. Okay. So you want 25, 30 recommendations from mom. Show mom how professional you are so that way she knows how you're going to treat her friends. Okay. If you're too casual, it could backfire. Okay. Cool? Great questions. Any other questions? I always get this one. Mike, what do I say for virtual appointments? Page 18. So page 18 is for virtual appointments. It's the same script. It's just instead of saying that uh, I'm gonna come over to your house, you just say I'm gonna call you. You just need uh, you just need to be in front of a computer. So everything's the same. The reason I'm calling, I got a new job. Part of my training required to put on appointments. I'm doing the training. Get paid. Get paid uh, the appointment. You don't have to buy anything. I can do the appointment right over the phone. All you need is internet connection. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. Cool. Any questions? Cool. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna partner up. I'm gonna have you read this five times each. Okay. Really get comfortable with your script, and then I'm gonna give you uh, some time. You guys will have probably about probably about 20 minutes to uh, book up your first five. Right. In about 20 minutes to book up your first five. Here's what I'm gonna do tonight. Here's what I'm gonna do tonight. For every two appointments you guys book up. For every two appointments, I only have a few left over. But first come, first serve, I have a couple of gas cards left over from last night, okay? So we call this a phone jam. So how it's gonna work is every two appointments, I'll give you one shot. And then you stand over here, at the right before you leave, you'll take a shot. And all you have to do is stand from right here and just make it in that trophy right there. Oh, every two appointments is a shot? Every two is one shot. So you book up six appointments tonight, you book up six appointments, that's three shots. You guys got this? All you have to do is make it in the trophy. Simple. Okay? So so here's what you're going to do. Um, I'm going to put your names on the board. Actually, well, if you don't mind, uh, we'll put your names on the board with your goals and everything. And then you guys are going to read this five times each real quick. Just get comfortable with the script, page 24. And then we're going to split you guys in half, where half of you guys will go next door. Half will stay in here. Every time you book up a demo, what you say is you say, what time is it? And then everyone else that heard you say that says, game time. And then Will or myself will ring the bell and we'll put a tally mark up next to your name on the board. So it's Friday, I just booked up an appointment with mom. I write mom's name in my schedule. What time is it? Game time. And hopefully it's not that lame, that sucks, but we'll go with it, okay? <laughs> cool? So we'll put your name up on the board every time you book up your two. Every time you book up your two, you let us know We'll put your tally marks up right next to your name every two appointments, and then you come in up and take a shot. The first, as soon as the first, I only have uh, five gift five gas cards left, so you obviously want to work you know, fast, but don't like cut corners and don't be dishonest to win a gas card. All you're doing is reading the script to mom, aunt, grandma, best friend's mom, right? You follow me? Read the script, make sure they write it down, put it in your schedule. You, you yell, what time is it after each one? You come in here after each two, take your shot. As soon as the gas cards are gone, they're gone. 
and you guys will have about, you know, maybe 20 minutes for this, okay? Cool? So partner up, five times each, and then we'll do the real thing here in just a moment. So partner up.